we have uh, begun over the last few years to offer prophylactic cranial irradiation to our patients with small cell lung cancer, not just with limited disease, but even with known incurable extensive stage disease because of a trial done in Europe that suggested a survival benefit from it. There was a presentation at ASCO this year that really questioned that, and I wanted to get your view, Nasser, on you know, the highlights of that presentation and whether this changes our practice patterns. Yeah, so the, the, the story with this is patients with small cell lung cancer have a high propensity to, to develop brain metastases. And brain metastases can be very troublesome. They cause headaches, they cause nausea, they cause instability. They're usually very symptomatic and very troubling to patients. And then you treat the patients with whole brain radiation, which is also very challenging for patients. And so we know patients who already have metastatic small cell lung cancer, if they live long enough, are likely to get brain metastases. So the question is, could we take patients who are responding to chemotherapy and go ahead and prophylactically radiate their brain when they're maybe a bit stronger and things aren't quite so advanced and try to avoid that symptom of a brain metastasis. And that's what Dr. Slotman's study from Europe looked at uh, six, seven years ago. And that was the primary endpoint of their trial. And they showed a substantial decrease in symptomatic brain meds by taking that approach. Now, they also reported a survival difference, but that was sort of peripheral. That was a secondary endpoint, an interesting observation, but that was not the main aim of their study. These Japanese investigators appropriately challenged that study because they were concerned about some of the design issues. They were concerned that patients weren't pre-screened for whether they had brain mets or not. They were concerned about some of the chemotherapy that they were receiving. They were concerned even about the dosages of brain radiation that patients were receiving. So they duplicated the study with some more stringent criteria uh, in their trial. And they showed that you also substantially reduce symptomatic brain metastases, but they did not show a survival difference. In fact, they showed that the survival seemed to be flipped in the other direction. How do I use this data? The way that I use this data is if you have a patient, and this is just my personal viewpoint, if you have a patient who has advanced small cell lung cancer, you know their life expectancy is limited. They have liver metastases, adrenal metastases, maybe their performance status is declining at the time that they come to see you. I know that their reprieve from their disease is going to be brief, and so I don't want to prophylactically radiate their brain, which does make them tired for sometimes several weeks and sometimes several months. And so that's the patient I'm, I'm not going to prophylactically or offer that. But we do have some patients who have metastatic disease, but they look pretty good at the time of diagnosis. Maybe they have a couple of bone meds and maybe an adrenal med, and they respond really well to chemo. You expect their life expectancy is probably going to be a year, a year and a half. We do have patients like that with small cell. It's reasonable to have that discussion because they probably are going to develop brain metastases. That's how I used the data before ASCO this year, and that's how I'm going to use it after ASCO. I'll feel a little bit more um, confident in, in, in doing just what you say. I agree. There, there is some common sense that, that we use when we talk to our patients about the next steps once chemotherapy is, is coming, the four to six cycles of first-line chemotherapy are coming to an end. And for the patient that's really having a hard time, it doesn't, it, for the reasons that, that, you, um, that you describe, it doesn't make sense to send that patient on f for radiation. And, uh, but with the data from ASCO this year, I'll feel a little bit more comfortable distinguishing between those that should go on to have radiation to their brain and those where we'll decide as a team, the patient and me, not to do that. Yeah, I, I would say that people had moved toward prophylactic cranial irradiation in some cases with real misgivings, and I think that this will certainly lead that to 
being a major question. And, uh, you know, if, if I would say that people will be at least more selective, if not swing much further away from doing it. 